Ah, Nerf Ammo. Those colorful little foam darts that fueled epic living room battles and made our parents question their furniture choices. Remember the thrill of diving behind the couch, locked and loaded, only to realize your last dart had mysteriously vanished into the void, never to be seen again? Well, today we're going behind the scenes to find out how these legendary foam projectiles are actually made. From the factory to your living room battlefield, it's time to relive the glory days and answer the ultimate question. Where do all those lost darts go? It all started in 1969 with the introduction of the Nerf Ball. An American toy developer named Rain Geyer approached Parker Brothers, a company famous for board games like Monopoly and Clue, with a series of indoor sports themed products. Among these was a simple foam ball. Parker Brothers decided to discard the rest of the game sets and focus on the 4 inch foam ball, branding it under the name Nerf. The ball was marketed as safe for indoor play, claiming it couldn't damage lamps, break windows, or hurt babies or elderly people. It quickly became a success, selling over 4 million units by the end of the first year. The design process for Nerf products kicks off with a burst of creativity as the team dives into brainstorming and sketching wild ideas on paper. From futuristic blasters to crazy new shapes, no idea is too out there. Designers would pull inspiration from all kinds of places, think popular video games, real-life gadgets, and even epic moments from TV shows and movies. Designers bring your favorite on-screen action straight into your hands. Concepts are then reviewed by a team, and once an idea is chosen, they create digital 3D models using computer-aided design or CAD software. This allows the team to refine the design, ensuring functionality and safety. The digital model is then tested for balance, grip, and overall appearance. Next, prototypes are made using 3D printing and other methods to evaluate how a blaster will feel in hand and operate. Testing involves evaluating performances, such as dart distance and accuracy, and ensuring it meets safety standards. After successful testing, the design is then finalized and the blaster enters mass production. Materials are chosen, molds are created, and the product is manufactured, assembled, and prepared for packaging and distribution. In Nerf manufacturing, plastic is the primary material used to manufacture the body and various components of Nerf blasters, including the exterior shell and internal mechanisms. Nerf blasters are typically made from a variety of plastics, each chosen for its specific properties. The first one is acrylonatile butadiene styrene, shortened as ABS plastic. This is a common choice for the outer shell of the blaster because the plastic is known for being strong, durable, and impact resistant. These qualities make it ideal for the rough handling that Nerf blasters often experience during play. Some blaster components, such as internal gears or transparent parts, use another type of plastic, polycarbonate, due to its toughness and transparency. It is used for components that require higher strength without being prone to cracking. The last type of plastic being used is polypropylene. This plastic is used for flexible parts, such as certain clips or grips, as it has a good balance between flexibility and durability. After plastic has been sourced, the next step is molding the plastics into guns and it's created by a method called injection molding. The plastic materials would be heated until it becomes molten and then be injected into specifically designed molds shaped like the blaster parts. Once injected, the plastic is cooled down and hardens to form solid parts. During this molding process, colors and designs are easily applied. In order to allow safe, lightweight, and reusable ammunition, foam is used to create the bullets. Just like the plastic aspect, foam materials need to be selected, and the closed-to-cell polyethylene is chosen mainly for its softness and lightweight properties. After selection comes foam extrusion, which is a method where the raw materials for the foam are heated, mixed, and shaped into long cylindrical rods. Let's explain that better. The closed-cell polyethylene is heated until it becomes malleable. Then gases like carbon dioxide are blown into the polyethylene causing it to expand, creating the foam's larger cellular structure. After this, the material undergoing the process will be pushed through a shaping die to form long cylindrical foam rods. These rods are typically the same diameter as the Nerf dart body. Once extruded, the foam cools and solidifies into its cylindrical shape 
and becomes ready to be cut with precision machines into the desired dart lengths. Each Nerf dart is generally between 2 to 3 inches long. For specialty darts, additional shaping or trimming might occur to ensure aerodynamic performance or to match the design of a particular Nerf dart model. Lastly, the small rubber tips are made. Thermoplastic rubber, or silicone, are used because they are both flexible, soft, and impact absorbing, with silicone having advantages of higher resistance to wear and tear. This material will undergo injection molding like the plastic. Once the rubber has cooled and solidified, the mold will open and newly formed dart tips are injected. These tips are then checked for defects such as bubbles, surface imperfections, or uneven molding. Any defective parts are discarded. In some cases, the tips may require a secondary finishing process, such as trimming any excess material that may have leaked out on the mold. This ensures that the tips are smooth and uniform. Once the dart heads are formed, they are attached to the foam body. This is done using adhesive or heat bonding techniques to ensure a secure connection. The adhesive is strong but flexible, allowing the darts to withstand repeated use. With Nerf offering a variety of dart types beyond the standard foam darts, some of them require additional manufacturing steps. For example, phosphorescent materials will be mixed into the thermal plastic rubber of the glow-in-the-dark type of bullet before injection molding. These tips will be able to absorb light and glow-in-the-dark environment. Another one is the suction cup tips. These type of darts have a wider, flatter rubber tip with a concave surface that allows them to stick to smoother objects. These are also made through injection molding but require more complex molds to achieve the suction cup shape. Before the darts are packaged, they go through quality control checks to ensure consistency in size, durability, and safety. Any darts that are misshapen, improperly adhered, or damaged are discarded. The darts are then grouped into packages, ready to be sold with Nerf blasters or separately as refill packs. What fond memories do you have playing with these epic toys? Share your stories in the comments below. Be sure to like our video, share, and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this.